The quaint town of Monroe, Louisiana, was abuzz with anticipation as wedding bells neared. Molly Nicole Watson, a beloved 35-year-old, was on the cusp of her happily ever after, her heart brimming with love and dreams for the future. But in a cruel twist of fate, her life was tragically cut short just days before her wedding, leaving behind a community stunned and heartbroken. Molly was cherished for her radiant spirit, her unwavering kindness, and her unwavering devotion to those she held dear. Molly was surrounded by a loving circle of friends and family who adored her. She was eagerly counting down the days until her wedding, ready to embark on a new chapter filled with happiness. But beneath the surface of her joy, a dark secret simmered, one that would lead to a devastating act of betrayal and heartbreak. Just days before her wedding, Molly's life was tragically cut short. Her body was found on a desolate Louisiana road, the victim of a brutal crime. The investigation that followed peeled back layers of deception, revealing a chilling tale of secrets and betrayal. Molly Nicole Watson was born on December 15, 1982, in Moberly, Missouri, to Timothy and Sandra Watson. She grew up with her brother, Tim. Molly was a bright student, excelling in her academics. She shared in one of her YouTube videos that she had Asperger's syndrome but was considered high-functioning. She pursued a college education focusing on computers, education, and psychology. Molly had a passion for singing, creating costumes, and making videos on YouTube. She was a kind and loving person who was cherished by many. Molly's first marriage ended in divorce. During the divorce proceedings, she discovered she was pregnant and later gave birth to a son. After her divorce, Molly began a relationship with Amber, a childhood friend. They were together for about five years. While living with Amber, Molly started a new job at the Moberly Area Correctional Center. It was there that she met James Addy, an older corrections officer. Molly was immediately smitten with James, and they began dating in 2011. This new relationship led to the end of her relationship with Amber. James, 15 years Molly's senior, had a history of multiple marriages. He explained to Molly that he was in the midst of a divorce from his current wife, Melanie. Once the divorce was finalized, he envisioned a future filled with happiness with Molly. Molly was completely smitten with James, and their romance blossomed over seven years. They shared vacations to Mexico and Disney World, and they made plans for their life together. Molly felt like she had finally found her soulmate in James, and she was ready to commit to a lifetime with him. Although Molly had deep feelings for James, her family had reservations about him. He could never look you in the eye, he could never talk to you directly, everything was very evasive with him. He put off bad vibes to everybody, Molly's brother, Tim, recalled. Her parents and brother were uneasy about James, especially since Molly always seemed to be the one footing the bill for their trips and expenses. While the two weren't living together, Molly was intent on building a future with him despite her family's concerns. After seven years of dating, in 2018, Molly and James got engaged and began planning their wedding for April 29th of that year. Molly was thrilled, envisioning a Disney-themed wedding where she'd marry her Prince Charming. She documented her excitement in videos as she tried on stunning ball gowns, eventually buying two dresses because she couldn't decide which one she liked best. There was a lot of burgundy and gold, kind of reminded me of a renaissance-themed wedding, the wedding planner shared. From Molly's perspective, it was going to be a beautiful wedding and the best day ever, with the wedding just weeks away. Molly informed the wedding planner that they needed to cut down on the guest list. She explained to her family that James's ex-wife, Melanie Addy, had been involved in a serious car accident and was on life support. She said James and his children, a son and a daughter, were facing the agonizing decision of whether to take her off life support. A few weeks before their wedding day, James told Molly that they had decided to remove Melanie from life support and that he needed to be with his children during this difficult time. Molly's brother, who had always been wary of James, expressed his concerns about their relationship. He reminded Molly that she could check online for divorce records, noting the absence of any documentation showing that James and Melanie Addy had divorced. Despite this, Molly was busy moving boxes of her belongings into James's attic, preparing for their life together after the wedding. During the week leading up to their nuptials, the couple went to obtain their marriage license. 
The county recorder noticed that James appeared unsettled when asked about his previous marriage and its conclusion, responding with, Why do you need to know that? Both James and Molly signed an affidavit confirming their eligibility to marry, and the license was issued. Tragically, just two days later, Molly was found dead. James's daughter recalls that on the evening of April 27, 2018, her father returned home late, and everything seemed perfectly ordinary. He mentioned he went to see a friend, and she felt no reason to doubt him. After sharing a hug and a kiss, she went to bed unaware of the events about to unfold. The following morning, however, police arrived at their door, ready to reveal the secrets James had kept hidden for so long. On April 27, 2018, just two days before her wedding to James Addy, Molly's body was discovered near her vehicle on a remote road. Her engagement ring was still on her finger, leading investigators to rule out robbery as a motive. Inside her car, police found personal items that identified her, including her marriage license to James Addy. As is common in such cases, authorities initially viewed the fiancé as a potential suspect, though their immediate priority was notifying James of Molly's murder. Molly had been shot execution style, with the gun pressed against the back of her head, as revealed by the autopsy. When police arrived at James Addy's residence, they were taken aback when a woman answered the door, introducing herself as Melanie Addy, James's wife of 23 years and the mother of his children. She was completely shocked when officers informed her that a woman supposedly engaged to her husband had been murdered. It was just mind-boggling. It made no sense at all. It didn't seem right. This was not my life, Melanie recalled. Melanie and James Addy tied the knot in 1995 and welcomed two children, a son Ben and a daughter Emma. On the day the police visited Addy's home, Emma was preparing for her prom. Mel worked as a teacher's assistant, while James was employed as a corrections officer. She had never suspected that he was involved in an affair. He seemed the same all the time. He would get off work at 3 p.m., and usually he would get home at 5 p.m., and I would say, why are you always late? and that would be an argument. He didn't want to tell me anything, Melanie remembered. She recalled an occasion when James went on a supposed business trip to Florida, but he was actually with Molly. She also mentioned a trip to Mexico that James took with friends, a journey he enjoyed so much that he later brought Melanie to the same resort. Unbeknownst to her, he had been with Molly in Mexico instead of his friends. James was taken in for questioning, and his daughter Emma was getting ready for her prom. Emma noticed that her family seemed somber, and her mother whispered, How am I going to tell her this? Melanie told Emma that a woman had died and the police wanted to talk to her father. Since James was a corrections officer, it wasn't unusual for him to be called in to provide information about a former inmate. Emma's mother insisted she get ready for prom and enjoy her night, which she did. Later, Emma saw a news article explaining that her father was engaged to the woman who had died. Emma had met the woman once when her father took her to have a costume made for a comic convention, but she had no idea her father was in a relationship with her. After James was taken into custody, Melanie began searching their garage for any clues about his situation. When she couldn't find anything, she decided to check the attic. There, she discovered boxes belonging to Molly Watson that had been moved into their home, including photo albums. As she flipped through the albums, she found numerous pictures of James and Molly from the past seven years, including images from their trips to Florida and Mexico. Melanie was heartbroken as she came to the painful realization that her marriage was over. James was arrested and charged with Molly's murder after his vehicle was found to match the tire impressions at the crime scene. Additional evidence included a secret second phone James used to communicate with Molly, a witness who saw a man parked with Molly before her murder, though they couldn't positively identify James, a unique t-shirt found near Molly's body with her blood on it that was identified by James's daughter Emma as one she had made for her father, and a search of Molly's phone that showed she was searching for Melanie Addy's obituary the day before her murder. Ballistics determined that a gun and ammunition belonging to James were consistent with the weapon and slug used to kill Molly. However, there was no DNA evidence on the gun that matched Molly Watson, and no DNA belonging to James Addy was found on the t-shirt. Melanie Addy initiated divorce proceedings just a week after her husband's arrest. She later expressed to the media that he was a pretty selfish person.
It could be controlling and intimidating. It could be challenging. It just seems like something he would do to fix a problem. Her comments suggest that she believes her now ex-husband is guilty, despite his claims of innocence regarding the murder. His daughter has also voiced her belief in his guilt. Nearly three years after Molly's murder, James Addy finally faced trial on April 26, 2021, the first day of testimony. Both the prosecution and defense delivered their opening statements. The defense emphasized that adultery alone does not equate to guilt in a murder case. The jury was shown photographs of Molly's body and listened to the 911 call from the person who discovered her. Additionally, images were presented of the wedding supplies Molly had at her home, highlighting her excitement about becoming James's bride. As the trial progressed, Melanie Addy took the witness stand, testifying against her ex-husband. She revealed that she had been completely unaware of James's relationship with Molly Watson. Emma Addy also provided key testimony, stating that her father wasn't at home between 7 p.m. and 10 p.m., the time frame when Molly was killed. This contradicted James's initial claim to police that he had been home by 7 p.m. and had spoken to Molly on the phone for around 30 minutes. Records showed that James had indeed spoken to Molly between 7 and 8 p.m., her last phone call before her death. Emma also linked her father to the crime through a unique t-shirt found near Molly's body. While this evidence was presented to tie James to the scene, the defense countered by arguing that the t-shirt and their affair didn't necessarily prove he was responsible for Molly's murder. During the trial, the wedding planner took the stand and revealed that Molly had told her James's ex-wife, Melanie, had died in a car accident just before their planned wedding. This was untrue as Melanie was still alive. Phone records showed that Molly had been on the phone with James as she drove from her home to the location where her body was eventually found. The prosecution also presented ballistics evidence attempting to link the .22 caliber bullet recovered from Molly's head to James's gun and ammunition. Additionally, two former jail inmates testified that while awaiting trial, they had asked James why his bail was so high. They claimed he responded, I put someone face down in a ditch, seemingly referencing Molly's murder. By the third day of the trial, a firearms expert took the stand, explaining that the ammunition found in James Addy's home matched the type that would have been in the empty ammo box discovered near the crime scene. Additionally, experts testified that the tire impressions at the location were consistent with the tracks from James's vehicle. The medical examiner provided details on Molly's death, stating that it was caused by a contact gunshot wound to the back of the head. With that, the prosecution rested its case. Surprisingly, the defense chose not to present any witnesses, and James Addy opted not to testify in his defense. Three years after the date Molly Watson had hoped would be her wedding day, closing arguments were presented in court on April 29, 2021. The defense argued that the evidence against James Addy was insufficient to prove his guilt, asserting, your doubts are reasonable that James did not kill Molly. In contrast, the prosecution portrayed James as a man desperate to hide his double life, stating, James Addy threw Molly away like a piece of garbage. They proposed that Molly had uncovered the truth about James's ongoing marriage to Melanie, likely after her failed attempt to find Melanie's obituary. Confronted with the reality, James allegedly chose his wife over his fiancée, killing Molly with a gunshot to the head on the same day that would have marked James and Molly's third wedding anniversary had they wed. The jury delivered a verdict. James Addy was found guilty of first-degree murder and armed criminal action. He received a life sentence without the possibility of parole for the murder charge, along with an additional 20 years for armed criminal action. Despite the conviction, James maintains his innocence and intends to appeal. Following the sentencing, the prosecutor issued a statement saying, Justice has been served today. James Addy will never be released from prison in the state of Missouri. His actions destroyed two families, the family of his victim, Molly Watson, and his own. While nothing can bring Miss Watson back to her family, who loved her very much, society can send a strong message that violent crime will not be tolerated. Murderers will face prosecution and justice. When it came time for the victim impact statements, Molly's son expressed his grief, saying, You took one of the most important people in my life away from me. She was an amazing, smart, beautiful person. Her brother shared how their parents were devastated by Molly's death, 
leading to their mother suffering a severe mental breakdown that ultimately caused her death. The strain of caring for his wife also led to their father's death, both passing before justice was served for Molly. Tim was convinced his parents would still be alive if not for James Addy's selfish actions, and he described his sister as his best friend. Molly Watson loved deeply, perhaps too trusting and unaware of the danger she was in. She fell in love with a man who deceived her. As the wedding day neared and Molly started to grow suspicious, James chose the cowardly route, taking her life rather than ending the relationship. It seems likely he was desperate to keep his wife and children from discovering his seven-year affair and the web of lies he had spun. In the end, his double life shattered the lives of everyone involved. Molly's tragic passing has become a symbol of hope for those seeking justice and healing. Her story serves as a stark reminder to pay attention to warning signs in relationships and to take action when something feels wrong. While her loss is irreplaceable, her family and friends are dedicated to honoring her memory by raising awareness and offering support to others who may be in dangerous situations. Molly's story is one of profound sadness and loss, but it also serves as a call to action to protect those we love, to speak out against injustice, and to fight for justice relentlessly. As we remember her, let her life and her untimely death remind us of the importance of trust, honesty, and the courage to seek help when we need it most. If you found this video compelling, leave a like and your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to subscribe and watch our other videos.